go ahead with what we're making today. Um, the stamps I've used are the floral, the festive flora and fauna collection, um, but I didn't want to go Christmas. Not at this stage, it's just too early for me to be making Christmas cards. Um, so, but if you already have them in your collection, it'll be really nice to be able to use them all year round, um, really. So I've gone with um, like a cherry blossom vibe today, um, using this stamp here and the, the Christmas rose. Um, so I'll show you how we stamp those up. And it's all to do with the colours really, as to what theme really you want to create on your card. Obviously if I'd have used Christmas colours um, it would have had a whole different look. But I've gone with the newest of the um, Lisa's paper pads, the Pretty Petals, and these, this has only just come through to me in the post so I was really keen to use these actually. Um, it's these papers are printed on the same quality papers as we've come to know and love um, from Lisa's paper pads. And again, these designs on these papers really don't um, disappoint. They are gorgeous. Again, they're double sided. We have like a vintagey floral pattern. So we have like the base colour here, did you can see the yellow? Then we have like a larger rose type flower sitting on top of that with an, a crackle design sitting on top of that, that again so it's a really is a layered design giving a really gorgeous vintage look so we have those in different colorways here really subtle colors really vintage colors but obviously you can um sort of jazz them up to be quite modern as well as putting them on to your vintage uh, designs as well I really like the blues and the yellows in these. And as I say, we have, um, they are double sided. So on the reverse, we have an even more vintage look actually. It's a lot more distressed look. The flowers are a lot smaller. And we still have that base color in the background. So that would make up half the paper pad with these smaller flowers. And then we go on to have um, like the coordinating plainer papers um, but they still have beautiful detail and um, distressed sort of a crackle detail on these as well so if you have Lisa's crackle stamp and crackle um, stencils then you'd be able to sort of make a really nice coordinated look so those are the papers now this is what I've used in the background here um, I've used uh, the blue in the background and I've used the pink in the foreground. The card I'm making today, I'm actually putting this onto um, a craft card. Let me just move this out of the way. And I found, I should have thought about this when I, before I made this card because I've actually covered over quite a lot of these designs. Um, so what I've done when I've mounted the card for or the papers for the card today. I'll just turn this over. What I've actually done, I've actually gutted the cards. So what that means is I've taken out the centre parts. Um, you can see that here. I'm actually not using one of the design papers for the, the matte and layer. I'm using like a pink pearlescent. And all I've done, I've used Lisa's uh, nested scallop square dies here and I've taken out the center of these cards so I've used the larger plain one to take away the the center of the pearlescent card so I have that mat there and then I've used the smaller plain die to take away the center of the pattern paper there which has given me this so in effect I now have an extra matting layer which I can use on another card and I'm still getting the benefit of these beautiful papers so that you can really get the most out of your papers it's such a shame to cover these up so I uh, should have done that on this one I didn't but I will do in future so there we are we I wanted to show you that before I actually stuck that down so let me just put that down uh, onto the card just now before we get into the main demo 
because we really want our papers to stretch as far as we can and uh, let's say the more use we get out of them and it's such a shame especially when these papers are double sided as well to actually cover these up there we are so we have that card ready for in a second I'll just leave that to one side now the central part that I'll be working on to again has been cut with Lisa's square nested dies and this is the I'll just show you the set here we have this plane and the scallop so this is the larger of the plane and then we have the next size down in the plane um, I mean I say plane but they do have a really lovely stitch detail so all I've done is taken Lisa's super smooth card and cut out a piece of white card with this die and this is the central area that we're working on I've actually uh, reduce the size as well just so as we can um, get a bit more of the pattern of the gorgeous papers now as I've done last week I don't know if you watched last week um, I'm actually going to create the background and I'm going to create like a cherry blossom effect so in doing that I wanted to create like a blue sky in the background um, add a little bit of pink to incorporate the pink of the design papers and just a tiny bit of yellow just so we have like a, a sunlight coming out from behind the the flowers but what I like to do is actually use the dies as like a stencil so that will enable me to have a nice clear white frame around the outside of my inked square here and I think that just gives an added an added layer it means you um, it looks like sort of foam matte and layering but I think it just gives a really nice crisp edge so I'm going to use these three colours today can you see those on the screen yeah you can so we've got the speckled egg I went with that because I didn't want a really bright blue the nice muted blue just works well with the pink then I have the sponge sugar and the squeezed lemonade so, you've seen this lots of times before. I'm using the die as the stencil here. So, you can tape this down to actually make sure um, this stays in one place. But what you don't want to do is have the tape sort of encroaching onto the uh, card in the centre there. Um, I'm working off as well one of Lisa's messy mats today because there's a lot of inking involved and like I've said in the past when you actually ink like this you go from the ink pad onto a blending mat or a piece of copy paper first and you just take off that initial harshness of the ink and before you start working onto your cardstock and that just gives a really lovely soft blend and you can see how the colour is actually going down onto the card here now before I carry on too much, I'm just, going to, I'm just going to come in with a bit of yellow because as I say I want to have this yellow highlight in behind the flowers here. And we don't need a huge amount of ink for this so I'm using the squeeze lemonade and I'm just coming in really lightly into this patch here. Now we need to build this up slowly, slowly because we don't want, well I I don't want sort of a glaring yellow patch that's the way that I work I do like to work quite subtly with my inks probably more so than others I just like the effect that it gives so we have that sort of, sort of sunlight bloom there that we can see and then we can continue then using our blue all over the paper now I'm going with blue over the entire page today and again I've said this in the past don't worry too much if this blend goes a little bit patchy because we are in effect creating um, a sky scene so any patchiness you can just sort of say they're clouds so that'd be lovely and to incorporate the pink um, from the design papers I am going to be using some sponge sugar so we can just start blending that in to the background again build this up slowly 
and we just add a bit of colour here and there. So I went to I wanted to go with the cherry blossom theme because it's what the um, flowers from the stamp set reminded me of. Um, and also the stamp, I'm not quite sure, I think it might be a mistletoe. I think that's what they were designed for as it's a Christmas set. But I, my plan is to use that as like the foliage um, in the background for the blossoms there. So we have a li little bit of pink there going on in the background and you can see those colours have blended really well. So when we mount that onto, onto there, you can see the, the pink of the background pinks, picks up the pink of the ink. That's a tongue twister if ever I heard one. <laughs> um, okay. Now, if I put these inks away, I should come back to those in a second when I colour the flowers. Just bring in the stamp set now, so you to have a, a proper look at. This is the um, the fest. It's a part of the festive collection, um, the festive flora and fauna. So you can see we have the mistletoe. Um, this would possibly even be berries, and you'd colour these in red. You have the pine cones, holly, and different types of roses. And it was this one that I thought we could use, um, like as a cherry blossom. This could also be a really nice spring flower, any type of sort of um, apple blossom, cherry blossom. And I'm going to use this as the foliage in the background. So I have the stamp here. And I want to create like, um, we're not going to see the whole tree. So if you imagine like the tree branch here and we have the, the leaves uh, and the branches sort of coming onto the page across here, sort of across the skyline where the, where the sun is. So if you look at the shape of the of the stamp here, can you really look, do it through this way? If you look at the shape of the stamp, um, you've actually got a really nice straight sort of trunk part there. So I'm going to ink the stamp, but I'm going to not ink these parts here. And you'll see why in a second. So this is basically the shape of the stamp that I'm using. And you can see why I'm sort of creating like a linear effect because I will be putting this banner across the centre. Um, so I wanted all the design above the banner and leave it sort of plain below. So I'm going to use a Versafine Claire because this stamp's really nice fine and it's in a grey. I didn't want to use black, I found that that would be too harsh. So... I'm going to ink the stamp and I'm just going to be very careful not to ink those two lower branches um, that I pointed out before. So what I do, and then I just wipe away with, with my thumb, you can use a cloth or a baby wipe just to make sure that we don't have the excess ink there. And then because of where I've placed the sun, I sort of know where I'm going with my stamp here. So I'm going to go straight across the middle and stamp that down and you can see it's a really lovely effect. Now I'm going to ink the stamp again in the same way, um, leaving out those two branches in the middle and just giving that a quick clean. Now you can see little bits there but that's not, I won't worry too much about that because that part of the design will be hidden. Um, so I'm just going to bring, come in with some sticky notes as well because I want to keep that clean edge of blended ink so I'm just going to mask that off like that so that the stamp doesn't encroach. Let's just give that another quick ink. Okay. Now I'm just going to fill in the space. Um, you can sort of see where the, the stamp will position itself in there. So we have like our cherry blossom. I think I might leave it at that. I did use three stamps before, but the way I've positioned that, that works just nicely. So just by sort of reimagining how I'm going to use this stamp, this stamp has taken on a completely different look. 
Um, I'm going to colour these berries. Um, I'm not going to do them red. I'm just going to come in with some pink. These would be the cherry blossom buds. God, I've really picked my words today, haven't I? <laughs> um, so we colour these in pink so they're just about to burst into life. And actually you can use whatever you can feel most comfortable with to colour these. Um, this Copic pen actually matches these papers really well. It's RB32. It's some um, shadow pink, if anyone's interested. Um, I'll just do this really quickly. And so there's no real skill in this. You're just colouring the dots. And I think sometimes uh, the less precise you colour these, this sort of style, and um, I think it just looks really nice. Now what I will do, um, I'm just going to use my Distress Marker again, just with Bundled Sage, because that's a really sort of nice soft green. And we'll just go in and fill in those details of the trunk there like that. As you probably noticed I'm using these with these um, distress markers quite a lot just lately. Um, it's funny how you go through phases, isn't it, with your different um, with the different products that you have. And obviously all of uh, Lisa's products are always on my desk, so I'm finding different ways to be able to use them. Um, but again, none of that not too precise and it's really quick and easy. And all of us Already we have a really strong sort of spring-like feel to these Christmas stamps. So that's basically our background um, ready to go onto the card there. Um, if you were perhaps giving this a try and even for a Christmas card you could um, do this similar sort of design actually it would be really nice to sprinkle like a glitter over those buds so if you just put small dabs of glue all over these berries and then you can sprinkle um, some of Lisa's really fine glitter over that that would look so pretty and it gives a really nice frosted look for Christmas so that would be worth a try. Right the next thing we need to think about is the flowers. I've stamped the flowers out already um, so I've already coloured this one in this is the smaller two and I've added some shading. I shall just go ahead and colour the larger one. The way I've done with this was to take the Distress Ink and my blending pad again and just gently go around the outside. Just a really subtle hint of colour. Um, you don't, don't need to add too much. And because I'm using the same pink as I've used in the background, we've got that coordination going on. So, I think that's just a hint of colour, which is really pretty. I've already used um, a Copic marker just to go through and just spot colour those central sort of stamens of the flower in a yellow. Now I'm just going to add a bit of shading just to bring the flower to life a little bit and I'm coming back in with my Copics again so I have both of the same colour there. That's not very useful is it? Uh, where did I put my other one? Okay so we've got two different colours there, we have a lighter colour and a darker colour. Actually what was it that one? No, oh, it was those two that I used. Okay, so I have a pale health, which is like a really, really pale pink, and I have the shadow pink. So I'm going to come in with the shadow pink, and I'm just going to... Is that shadow? Yeah. Actually, I'm just going to add the shadows to where the uh, leaves would actually tuck under each other. And this would actually start bringing the flower and its petals to life a little bit. So it's not a huge amount of shading. Um, and then we go in with the lighter one just to blend out those colours. And that just starts lifting the flower. 
I mean, the artwork in itself is really doesn't need a huge amount doing to it. Um, but you can just see, just by adding tiny little accents, that really sort of brings that to life. And just while that's blended, I'll just add a little bit more into the corners. As I say, I am not an expert colourer by any means, but I can do enough just to sort of bring the flowers to life. And if you consider that we started off with just a plain piece of white card, um, that's I think what the beauty of stamping is. I really enjoy what stamping and the possibilities that stamping, stamping can give to you because it, if you're a frustrated artist and you want, you have like images in your head and that you want to create, but you can't always put them down onto paper yourself. Um, you have the talents of like Lisa who actually brings these stamps to us and we can create sort of lovely pieces. Now, even like that, I think that's really pretty. But of course, because we're making a card, we need to add a sentiment. And you can see here, I've added um, the mini banner alphabet. Now, this is a new set to me. I mean, I never got, I didn't get this first time around, so um, I've only just got hold of this, um, which is why I've used this on this card. And it's so, so pretty and such a usable size. So I'll just bring those dies in here. Now, what I've done, I've actually taken them off the carrier packaging and I've actually put them onto a magnetic sheet. Yours won't come with a magnetic sheet. Um, but I've just put those on there sort of for storage. Because of the size of these dies, it's actually ideal to actually use all of your spare strips. Um, when you cut your design papers down to fit onto your cards, um, especially onto your 5x5 five five cards, you end up with so many of these little strips, which I'm just loath to throw away. But they are actually really ideal for tiny little dies like this. So I'm going to spell out happy with the dies and I'm going to stamp the birthday. Now, I've already cut out a couple of the or most of the word for happy. What I'm going to do, just to show you how well that these actually die cut, I'm going to bring in Dawn's favourite little die cutter here, and I'm just going to cut the last of the letters out that I need. So I'm going to carry on using this little strip here, because this is actually the same paper as is on the backing of the card, so it's all going to coordinate. And you can see that if I just lay that on there um, you can see for one how well the uh, Lisa's design papers die cut in a gorgeous weight um, you can see how precisely that these dies actually cut even onto such a small piece of paper and you can see the error of margin there you know it's just tiny but we've got such a precise cut I mean the quality of these dies are fantastic so I'm just going to use a poker tool. We have the release holes through the die, so we can just pop those out. And there's the tiny little banner. Isn't that so pretty? Gorgeous. And we pop out the pieces of the letter. And put that to one side. Now I'm mounting these onto a piece of pearlescent card, which is the same as the pearlescent card that I've used to mats and layer onto the card itself. So I should use my glue. Now using a slightly darker colour behind these banners allows the actual letters to pop out. If you don't want to do that, what Lisa has included um, in the die set is a blank one of these dies. So you can actually cut yourself um, another one of these small banners um, in a contrast colour to actually layer behind the die as well. So, but I wanted to have the background coordinating. And I actually wanted part of this strip to actually be visible, so I'm going to cut this tail off in a second. 
once I bring it all into the card and sort of layer it up. And you can see now why I wanted to use the, the straightness of the bottom of this sort of sprig stamp here, because that is giving me the, the position to put my sentiment there. And then I should be laying the flowers over the top, like so. There we are. So all of a sudden you can see how this card is coming together. Now, I'm going to start assembling this card. Now I can see where the pieces are going to go. So just a small bit of glue. I'm going to put this one here. And I thought what I might do this on this one, I might actually add some of Lisa's twine. Um, it comes in three different colours. It's uh, it's this natural colour. We have the pink and a green. I can't remember what it's called. Perhaps somebody will look that up for me and um, just pop the information on the um, in the comments. So I'm just going to add a little bit of detail just under this flower here. So put a little bit of glue just to secure that in place. And then when I position the flower and the sentiment, that will secure that. Fully, I think so. I'll just hold that down a second. There we are. Just get two mucky fingers there. Right. So we're going to have the sentiment go there, and I want to have this flower sort of tucked in behind. Now, to do this, what I'm actually going to do is if you see here. We have some of the flower tucked behind the words and sitting over the top. What, how we achieve that is to actually cut into it, just snip into it and just along the detail that's already drawn in. So it's only a really small snip, just there, just up to the centre of the flower. And you can see it then gives us that option just to slot on top like that and it just means it sort of nestles in nicely um, around the wording. So with that in mind I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to that leaf there, slot that onto the banner. Now you can see why I wanted to leave a little bit of the tail there. So now when we put this down, we can then think about actually snipping this tail off to the right size. So I'm just going to come in. And this is like everybody else. And I think Dawn mentioned it the other day in her live, as did Heidi. We don't measure anything. It's all done by eye and offering these pieces up to the card and just making a pencil mark. Um, so we get the right size and then we can snip that away and now we are ready to add the glue to the rest of the back there and we can put that in place You can sit that there and you can see now that the this extra twine or the raffia, I can't remember what Lisa called it now actually, um, would also be held in place there. So we just keep that finger on that for a second just so that takes. And what we can do, we can just give this a little haircut just to oh, just to snip away those extra pieces. Let's just get those back underneath there. And I'll just snip off these pieces here. Oh, it made just some sharpening. It's not sticking over. Ah, there we go. So there we are, that's already added a little bit of dimension as something a little bit different. Now we've already got the happy on there, so we just need to add a birthday. Now to do this, I'm bringing in yet another stamp set. Now I'm not sure if this one is available at the moment, but it was um, 
the only set of leases that has a really small birthday on there um, that I wanted to stamp. So I'm going to take this happy birthday stamp, which I've already put on my stamp block here. And obviously I don't want the happy, I've already used that here. So a little bit more masking. Um, all I'm going to do is just ink the birthday part of this in the same grey that I stamped the foliage with. Now it seems to be becoming a bit of a <laughs> bit of a thing. Every time I do do stamp, I tend not to use the whole stamp. I only I use the part of it. Um, but that's the beauty of sort of mixing and matching. Now I'm going to line that up, and I'm just going to put the birthday straight onto the card. Now if you're not happy doing this straight onto the card, then obviously you can stamp onto a piece of white card and stick it on. Or you can use your um, stamping platform. But I really love the different um, fonts in a sentiment. So I think it really draws attention to the sentiment. Um, and I just like that mix and match of styles. So you can see that it's actually a really quick card to come together. Once you've got all the elements sort of sorted, um, actually sticking them to the card, it's actually sort of, sort of quite simple in a, compared to other cards that I may have done. But I think it's just so effective and it's such a different way to use your Christmas stamps also. It, make, it gives them longevity. It means you can use them all year round. So that's a nice quick card from me today. Um, it does look slightly different. We've used slightly different papers. I hope I've given you a few more ideas and a few more techniques. Um, so I shall love and leave, love you and leave you for today because obviously we want to get back and make sure that we watch um, Lisa at three o'clock. Um, I think there's been a few sellouts, so it'll be interesting to see what actually comes onto the show this afternoon. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's samples again. Um, they all look fantastic on the show. And the papers that she bought are absolutely fantastic, aren't they? Um, my favourite was the the spring collection, I think. But um, I don't know, maybe even the vintage cars as well. I'd say I don't usually go for that, but it's a really nice way to use colour. Um, either way, it'll be a really great show to watch. So I'll leave you today, for today. I shall... Get the video sorted and I shall put the on YouTube for you and I shall put a, a proper picture of this on in the um, Facebook group as well. So thanks for joining me today and I shall see you again next week. Thanks everyone.